When everyone's on the same page, getting things done at work is easy. Make a bigger impact at work with Grammarly. Grammarly is your secure AI writing partner that allows your team to make their point and move faster. You can even save time by going from spending hours editing drafts to just seconds. Join the 96% of Grammarly users that say it helps them craft more impactful writing. Sign up and download Grammarly for free at Grammarly.com slash podcast. That's Grammarly.com slash podcast. Easier said, done. You're listening to Castrol CarCast on Podcast One. Well, we'll be back next week with new shows. Thank you for, uh, God, 10 years of CarCast, everybody. Uh, appreciate it. Keep you posted on all the fun stuff that's coming up. And there's a lot coming up in the new year as vis-a-vis automobiles. Right? We're going to do another car show at the Peterson, so you can come down to that. A couple, we've got some races, hopefully, in Europe coming up. Uh, all sorts of stuff. First, 8 Every podcast has mattress ads. Sure. Thousands of them, but only one uses technology and temperature to give you the deepest sleep. The Pod by 8 Sleep. First bed to combine dynamic temperature regulation and sleep tracking. Research shows a link between sleep performance and temperature. The Pod reacts in real time, adjusting the temp to keep you comfortable. The stats say it all. Pod customers fall asleep faster, toss and turn 25% less, and have a 17% increase in deep sleep because that's what you want. It's sleep hygiene, people. Take care of yourself. Right now, could you put a price on this stuff? It's your sleep. You know how much more productive you'll be during the day? Right now, you get 150 bucks off your pod and free shipping at 8sleep.com slash car. That's 8sleep.com slash car. E-I-G-H-T dot com. 8sleep.com slash car. <laughs> Yeah, get it on, got to get it on. Step, man. <laughs> Welcome to CarCast. Man, of course, Matt, the moderator, DeAndre over Hello. there. Castro CarCast, that is. Yeah. J.B. Weld, made in the U.S. of A. Pros and DIYers have trusted J.B. Weld for more than 50 years. We love these guys. We were just talking about SEMA off the air. I ran into these J.B. Weld guys. I've got a whole box of goodies. And you can get it at jbweld.com and Home Depot and Amazon and all the car car parts places everywhere. Also, Zycoat. We love Zycoat. CarCast brought to you by Zybar for better engine performance, horsepower, fuel economy, lower underhood temperatures. That's the name of the game. This is real science. You put the. I'm actually just using some of this stuff at the other uh, shop on the 935. So uh, learn more at Zycoat, Z Y, Zycoat.com. Yeah, I think Sean is using uh, Zycoat on uh, some of the stuff we're building. Yeah, give it a uh, shot. On the we 935. Had, we had some, uh, we had, I think we had a couple colors. I think we had a few color samples over there. Yeah. He's going to give it a shot. I think we're working on some braking stuff that uh rebuilding the uh on the 935 the backing plates that go to the to the uh, uh ducts for the you know venting of the brakes the uh the yeah. cooling ducts and uh we're rebuilding those. Yeah, we're rebuilding. They were a little the f- trash, and they got some holes in the tubing, and now's the time to get it all. And the fuel pump done. brackets. Yeah, that looks good. F- yeah. Well, I was I saw him the other day, and he was rebuilding the pumps. It, yeah. Like with new. Yeah. From pieces of old and new. <laughs> I always. I, I'm sure, like you go, hey, what does a 935 pump cost? Oh, it's. Fourteen thousand dollars, but you can get a Holly version for ninety nine bucks. That's what I tell him. Get the <laughs> Take Holly the sticker version off. <laughs> yeah, and then he gives me one of his answers. Where he goes, "The pressure's the same, but the flow's different." And then I go, "I don't know. What does that mean?" And I go, "It's not going to work." It's not going to work. Go, okay, yeah. so uh, he's rebuilding. They're yeah, they're like fourteen hundred bucks or something a pump. Right. I mean, you probably got to get them from like Canapa or someplace in Europe. And the nine, you know, nine thirty five, like I used to think it was bad back in the day when I had my M30, my uh, M3 BMW uh, E30. Yeah. First gen. First gen BMW. And I'd go to the BMW dealer and like go to the parts 
God, that's something I haven't done in a long time is gone to the parts counter. Yeah. Back in the day, the guy'd pull out that microfiche, you know, schematic thing and like <laughs> start looking for stuff for my Datsun pickup truck, you know. And it was always a bitch. Like when I so I'll I'll finish by saying you'd go there and the guy'd get the catalog open and he'd be like, Oh, you want a head gasket or a fuel pump or or whatever, injectors or something ignition, anything, he'd go, he'd stop, he'd start at the top, it'd be like a 318i or something, and then mm-hmm. he'd like start moving past like the 5 Series and the 7, you see the prices yeah, just yeah. going up, and then <laughs> then he'd get to the M department, yeah. and it's like, uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, the M department, it's like, it's like starting on the menu with the kitties, hot dog and fries, and like <laughs> yeah. ending up with the surf and turf market price, yeah, like yeah, at yeah. the bottom. Just like says it says market keep, price. Yeah, just like uh, M3 going, ga- like, head gasket, market Good price. Oh, right. Oh, you're an M. Oh, oh yeah. boy. Yeah. And then they go to the right, and you're like, holy shit. Um, Even the guy is surprised. He's like, we whoa. don't sell many of these. <laughs> yeah, I can see why. But I could remember, so my plan when I had my Datsun pickup trucks, my Nissan pickup trucks, or my Z cars, or wherever it was, everything I could possibly get from Pep Boys, I would get from Pep Boys. But every once in a while, it'd be like the dude – the 15 and a half uh, version of you behind the counter at the pet boys would go like, uh, that's a dealer. That's a dealer mm-hmm. item. And then you'd have to go into the Datsun dealer. And I remember one of them had an 84 Nissan pickup truck. And that's the one I put the fuel cutoff switch on and they pulled the ignition out and they just like, popped it used one of those dent pullers or something yeah. like pull the ignition out and they pull the destroy the ignition, the key and all that kind of stuff. And I remember that being like a kind of a big ticket item at the Nissan deal. Like, Oh, the replacement with the new key and the blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like $123 and 77 cents. And I was like, Whoa, Jeez. that's a lot of dough. But I also then realized that with a craftsman stubby, just flat screwdriver. The yeah. ones, remember the stubby ones? Yeah, yeah. That you just drop that in and turn it, work fine. Well, I mean, the guy that stole the ignition key was going to take your truck. That's what his plan was as well. I guess so. <laughs> so um, that just that worked fine. So I just kept that thing like rolling around on my bench seat and just put it in. You know, and start up, yeah. just throw it back on the seat <laughs> or in the ashtray or something. <laughs> it worked good until the cops pulled me over. Which is like, they're like, they pulled me over for having the ignition blown out. Anyway, you guys know the rest of the story. Yeah. But I do remember, I remember specifically, that, remember that parts counter feeling? Yeah. Like just going up, seeing that dude behind the thing, trying to figure stuff out. A lot of questions about like, do they have it? They order it? It's, it's, still, it's still a thing. It's still a thing. It's like, you go to a BMW dealer and like, you got to have the BMW battery. Because right. it has a memory, and you got to reset. You got to make all the power windows go up and down in a certain sequence to, to oh, set the battery. And, the, and they're like, and the battery is three hundred and fifty dollars. And like, and it costs like another one hundred and fifty dollars to get the guy to do the power window sequence thing. Mm. I got to tell you, the- I was like, that seems like a shit scam to me. Five hundred dollars to get a battery in your BMW. <laughs> the older I get. The more I realize, you just you got to tell one of your buddies who's got some ins to just get you a free SUV and just screw it, man. <laughs> yeah. Tired of dealing with all these used right? cars and parts and everything else. No, I <laughs> I I am so spoiled, but I really think like three year lease, take the car, just get a new car every three years, whatever. If you can afford it and never deal with the parts or the maintenance or the warranty or you know, I used to like. Dr. Drew drive his BMW M5s or his BMW whatever M5 X5 wagons and stuff. And like yeah. he's always like, oh, it's right on the warranty. And uh, they, they say it needs a whatever, but we just passed the warranty yeah. and like all that stuff. And I'd just be like, just lease it for three years, turn it back in, yeah. just get a, get a new one and never deal with the warranty or the whatever. But also, Drew, he would always buy his tires at the dealership. <laughs> I'd be like, are you high? Are you insane? It's like, it's a weird question he, for Drew. Like, are you high? <laughs> he'd be like, a, at the time, he's like, a, let's see, at the time, he's like 45 year old guy, you know, and he's like, 
I'm like, what are you doing getting your tires? Because he'd be like, I had got four new tires for the M5, and it was $1,726. <laughs> and I'd be like, no, it's too much. You know, this is like in, in you know, 1998 or something. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'd go like, don't go to the dealer, you doofus. And he'd go, well, where else are you going to go? And I'd go, <laughs> we could go to a tire place, go to Tire Rack or something. And he'd go, yeah, but these cars need a special tire. And I'm like, first... They're talking you into that. Yes. Like, number one. Number two, you can get those tires You can get anywhere the same else. tire. <laughs> These are Pirelli P0 with the 245 40 series on front. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Just go get And also, they do a little overselling of the car was designed around the tires. You know, maybe for a Bugatti Chiron or yeah. something. But you're, you know, mid-90s BMW. Anything that's the same size, yeah, it's gonna work. And but by the way, you're not a good enough driver to know the difference, and you don't drive the car hard enough you, to you, know. You think about it. You think about the high end cars, anything from from McLarens and Ferraris and Rolls Royce, and you think that those cars would be the most sensitive to differences in tires and wheel weights. And then you tell me what cars have more custom wheels on it than anything out there, right? It's all the high-end stuff. Right. right. Well, Every, that's a good I point. mean, on the way here, like some, someone was rolling in their Rolls Royce Ghost, all custom wrapped in flat white uh, with white wheels. Mm. It was not good. Hmm. Let's see. And the fitment looked weird. Now, normally, <laughs> I would assume that was a brother, but it was a, there's a strong Armenian contingent around mm, it here. It was a sister. A sister? Yes. Ooh, borrowed the brother's car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let me tell you about uh, J.B. Weld for big or small repair projects at home or in the garage. You need something that lasts. We're proud to have J.B. Weld. Epoxy Adhesive is one of our sponsors. You keep J.B. Weld in the toolbox, and you can keep it in the kitchen drawer, craft room. Good for metal, wood, plastic, and more. Made in the U.S. of A. Pros and DIYers have trusted J.B. Weld. For more than 50 years, man, when they sent me over a big swag box, I was pumped. <laughs> pumped, I tell you. Uh, actually, when you got it, you're like, let's bring this over to the to your table in the other room because you're like, because people are going to be getting in this thing. Yeah. Not, not in this building, but in the other building. No, <laughs> no. Here, they, wouldn't, they, they might huff it or something, but I don't <laughs> think they would actually use it for yeah. repairing <laughs> things. But uh, no, I, I didn't want the... Uh, I don't want the little raccoons with the little yeah. ban- bandit mask getting into my J.B. <laughs> Wells. I took that box. I hit it, man. To the, to the good glues. Yeah. No, you don't have to do that with adhesives in this building. But you have to do it with food. <laughs> and, and beer. And beer. But the <laughs> other building, you got to hide the tools and the, and the J.B. Weld. Anyway, stuff's good stuff. And they've expanded their line greatly. I mean, they're making everything now. So go to jbweld.com, Home Depot, Lowe's, AutoZone, O'Reilly, Walmart, Amazon. JB Weld's the world's strongest bond. So uh, Indy 500. Yeah, it was good. It was fun. You watched. You watched. I watched. You watched the good parts. It was exciting. The last I mean, 30 laps. <laughs> it was a 500-mile race that uh, was separated by two-tenths of a second between first and second. Yeah. It's exciting. Who won that thing? Simon. Simon Pagano won. Super sweet guy. Um, and he's, <laughs> but he's got the best social media. He's just all over. He's in New York and he's on like Today's Show and, and his dog Norman Pagano is running around and he's wearing the wreath around his neck and he's having the best time ever. And he just seems so humble and grateful that uh, his first time winning it. And uh, by the way, you get a six point a two point six six something million dollar bonus check. For winning that thing. Yeah, I well, think last year it was 2.5 with roughly the same total purse, but somehow it ended up just doing the math on it. It was like 2.669. Mm. Yeah, it was uh, almost $2.7 million bonus. It was uh, a great win, a great finish, and, and it's exciting, especially when we know a lot of the names. And Alexander Rossi, it. who came in second, uh, has been here. Uh, he and uh, Simon's been here, right? Simon's been here. Um, it's been a few years, but we saw him in, uh, in Long Beach. And uh, and uh, Rossi was in here, um, and uh, and Graham's been here as well. Sure. Graham had a Graham Rahal video had a he was doing really well. Yeah, you know. And this is what's what the sad part is is he got in a little fender bender, if you will, with 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 uh, 
Sebastian Bourdais mm-hmm. that uh, was in the Newman film. Sebastian was. Sebastian's yes. in the Newman film. We went out to Auto Club Speedway. That was yep. the day we spoke to Mario Andretti and, and, and Sebastian. And he seemed great. He seemed nice. And He is a really sweet guy. And and those two just kind of slid into each other. It was a little more Sebastian's fault. I'm going to say probably a lot more. And uh, Graham and, was pretty pissed. Graham was a little pissed. Well, and, Graham, and he was keeping his cool about Graham, it. Graham, here's, here's the thing when it comes to racing. Um, everyone is good and everyone is fast and everyone is relatively equal. So your passing, for the most part, isn't going to be, well, I'm just going to hit the turbo boost button yeah. and, and get wait till the straightaway and I'll just pull up next to him and I'll just blow past them, you know, because everyone has the same equipment and everyone's making the same horsepower yeah. and blah, blah, blah. So... When it and, and as you get into the higher end, you know, you get on the lead lap with the top 15 guys, mm-hmm. everyone's fast and everyone's moving and everyone knows what they're doing. So many of the passes are going to be like, all right, I'm going to kind of stick my nose in here and see if I can make this one stick, yeah. you know, even at the level of racing that I do, like when we're out doing the Trans Am race, and I got my cool shirt pass of the week. <laughs> Where is that shirt? Is that thing it. in the mail? Yeah, Chris has been wearing still, it for a year. It's been two years. <laughs> in the booth. <laughs> anyway, still check the mail. <laughs> what right. time's the mail yeah, guy Who gets coming? the mail? Come yeah, he, he hasn't been in in a while. Let me check. I think, uh, I think you're dealing with Because it's been 18 months. I feel yeah. like that thing should be <laughs> here by now. Let me get a tracking number on yeah. that. <laughs> but I, we were going down the straightaway. The guy was driving the same Corvette I was driving, and we're both going uh, you know, 160 miles an hour. And at the end, when we're like turning into left, I was like, I got to kind of stick my nose in here. Yeah. And just I'm tip. not going to pass him on the straightaway. Like, I, we got the same car, really. Yeah. I mean, I could, but I'm not good enough. So in the back straight, it was like everyone was like sliding around, coming off the turns and stuff. Like, no one was yeah, really, yeah. you know. So I just kind of stuck my nose in. And I late braked a little bit, and he saw me, and he started to like move in, but he saw me, so he kind of backed off. Mm-hmm. And but if he just kept going, like that's the line. The yeah, line yeah. is go on down, and you put your nose in, and you're kind of saying to the other guy, "Hey, you don't want to stay on the line, do you?" Because right, I right. poked my nose in here, yeah. and most of the time, the guys. Don't st- they give you the room because they're going to take themselves out as yeah. well as you out. Sometimes they don't see you like what happened to me at Laguna Seca when I was lapping that nine fourteen six. I was trying to s- stay with that RSR yeah, yeah. and the guy just came all the way. He just it's a maniac. Well, when you're in lap eight and fast guys are lapping you, just take a look in the mirror, dude. He yeah. just went all the way down, and he was just coming, coming, coming. It's like he doesn't see me at all. I don't know why I'm driving the biggest, loudest car out yeah. there, but that guy just came all the way down. I was like, "Oh, you're coming down. Oh, you're you're going to apex this turn, aren't you?" And that just forced me. There are no choice mm. at that point, but no spotters. Well, you know if if. If somebody knows somebody's there and they keep going, then the other person has only choices to either make contact with them or drive themselves off the road. Yeah. But if, by the way, if you're that guy in the big group and you've got the slow car and you're a lap down and you take a look around, you're like, where is everybody? Like, maybe you You should look closer. Look closer. Because someone's going to come flying by. So, Graham had his nose in there. Yeah, he was on the inside, and and Borde was kind of coming in close. It was kind of putting a little bit Graham into the grass. Yeah. And and then the, it was very unclear. Is is Graham backing off? Is Sebastian backing off? And it, it, you, you go through it in your head a few times. You see it at, again at and that, again. And at that, you kind you know, of feel Gra- like Graham, Graham. Graham was pissed. Yeah. He should have been perturbed, but there is – there's a kind of 30% chance of that happening when you stick your nose in on a turn that yeah look 
that if that guy, you know, if your other driver stays on the line, he is going to come down on you. He had enough of his nose in. That was his and, and turn. He, he, he stuck it out there quickly, like two or so times, enough to say, I'm doing this. I think I, I think the the way you come down on those types of situations is at, if you're Sebastian Bourdais, you have to give him the space to do it. With the understanding that he may do that to you again in four turns, and you yeah. got to then give him a little room. Right. If he's going to do that, you know, the turnabout is fair play. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I, he, Graham was, I, I, I forgot exactly where he started, 15th or 17th, and was really climbing up. I think he was top 10 when he made that move. Um, but uh, I. Talk about aggression driving you to to a level of success. Sometimes you end up in an accident like Borde and Graham, and sometimes you end up like Alexander Rossi, who he he had the he had the fuel refilling issue, and he had a pit that was like twenty three seconds because they couldn't get fuel in the car, and then they had the rookie like blocking him, like cutting across exactly what you were talking about in your race. Somebody cut across, cut in front of him, and he's. Banging his fist in the race at 200 miles an hour, he's banging his fist on the on the steering wheel and waving it in the air. I thought his arm was going to get torn off, and then he is just so aggressive and so angry. He's on the radio. He's like, "I'm so mad right now," and they're like, "It's okay, calm down. You're going to be fine." And he just kind of pumped that aggression into leading at the end, and then that, of course, at the last second, Simon Pagano passes him and he takes a number two spot. But that was just. That was just blood boiling, seeing red, and he just used it to his advantage. It was a great, uh, it was a great race. I watched. Speaking of Indy Five Hundred, I watched a thirty for thirty with Janet Guthrie, first yeah. female to uh, run at Indy, which was uh, a good thirty for thirty. Uh, interesting subject line. Funny for us because it's essentially the same story as Uppity, but with. Instead of a black guy at Indy, it's a woman at Indy. Yeah. <laughs> Up and he's been on a shelf for a year and a half. <laughs> uh, this thing came out uh, on tu- – the Janet Guthrie thing came out on Tuesday. I, I, and at some I point – they finished it Monday. <laughs> when, we, when, we, uh, when we launch Up and he, we'll get accused of copying that yeah. or, or being inspired by that or something because – it's the same. It's called qualified, and the thing about Uppity, the whole story is about him qualifying. It's yes. much more that than the uh, race. Well, there's some interviews in Uppity that you can't get today. I feel like, so that might date the movie. That might show that you filmed it a while ago. <laughs> I'm sure all the <laughs> haters out there in the media world. Will, so this uh, is a, this is a full thirty for thirty, not a short. This is a full <laughs> thirty for thirty. I know. If I would have pitched him, well, I did pitch him Newman. They said it was good for an eight minute short. Uh, yeah. But if I would have pitched him Uppity, I'm, I'm I'm done pitching anyone anything anymore. But if I would have pitched him Uppity, they probably would have asked so, for a short. Speaking of that, if you watch it though, I don't know if you can see it online. Um, but I'll. Uh, it was it was good, but it was mostly good because I liked the the sport. The problem is Janet Guthrie is a very interesting story, but she herself is not dynamic. Her her story's dynamic. Right. Her actions are dynamic. Willie is very dynamic. Very dynamic. And that's what that's the difference. It's the same story, but the person telling it is in her, she's low key yeah. and reserved and he's He's the exact opposite. It's the exact exact opposite. opposite. Right. I was going to bring up. I'm going to tell you about Castrol first, but I was going to bring up the Ford versus Ferrari thing because mm. the article that was came. I don't know if you did it on ACS yet, but the they they said this is the uh, the the Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid of the racing movies. Yeah, right? and so it's kind of an interesting reference because of the Newman film and stuff. But uh, listen, guys, Castrol Edge. It's stronger under pressure. Engines can lose up to 10% of performance due to friction. And with Castrol Edge with fluid titanium, it transforms under pressure to keep metal apart and fight power-robbing friction to unlock exhilarating performance. It's three times stronger. Three times, boo. Than the leading full sy- synthetic against viscosity breakdown per the Kurt Orban test in the 5W30 vis grade. The Edge formula always exceeds the toughest industry standards, but their new and improved formula incorporates the latest technology that makes it transform to be the strongest when pressure is the highest. Check out Castrol Edge. 
So are you able to see that 30 for 30 online? We're, we're checking. I mean, ESPN puts a lot of stuff um, online, so we're, we're seeing if it's on demand. I'll tell you the thing about the uh, ending of it. So she's a very interesting character, uh, Janet Guthrie, and the story's compelling. Uh, I don't think it's as good as Uppity because we just, there's more to Uppity. This is not quite – just doesn't quite have as much going on. And again – There is that charisma you're talking we about We have as well. the soundbite machine known <laughs> as Willie T. Ribs, and they have an, a nice uh, older woman who's too friendly to pound her chest or yeah, yeah. get in anyone's grill or drop any F-bombs or whatever. So, what? But <laughs> – uh, I will tell you the ending, it just ended and I was sort of like, I couldn't tell. It, it was such an abrupt and sort of non-climactic ending that I wasn't sure if my, and 30 for 30 does funny, co- weird commercial breaks, like noon, 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 brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And it was like, it just ended. Yeah. And I was like, uh did my VCR like cut cut this off? Or I mean, did 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 VCR, I? VCR, no, that's yeah, adorable. Did my TiVo? <laughs> did I just? Did this thing just get cut off? Yeah, what happened? Or, like, like what? did it stop recording? Well, because you, you know, runs out of time on the DVR. Oh, You're like, oh, it's a new show. I was why I had <laughs> taped the Indy 500, and I was like at the end, and it was like two hours and forty minutes, and. It was at like 2.37. It was like, we've got two laps to go. It's a horse race to the finish line. I was like, you better not cut. Don't oh my you gosh. cut. Don't you cut off. And I was trying to do the math. Like, what are they doing? Two minute laps? Minute 47? <laughs> like, what are, and it was like four minutes to go. Yeah. And it, seriously, with, with like seven minutes left on the DVR. Yeah. Because it's like, it cut at 2.40 and it was like 2.33 or something. And it was like. And they just yell like, "We've got three laps to go!" And I was like, "No, no yellows, no yeah. yellows! I'll never see it." Yeah, right. I remember <laughs> going going nuts. Yeah, like, and because it was such an exciting last it two is. laps, it, it got to the end. It made it past the the checkered flag. Um, <laughs> anyway, Max Paddle uh, looked that one up. So uh, yeah, Ford v uh, Ferrari. They they haven't dropped the trailer yet, but there's lots of there's photos, photos and articles and and. Uh, uh, Damon and Bale were at uh, were at Indy, and they dropped a flag, and they did the uh, they did some interviews there, and uh, the photos are looking good, and and the director uh, James Mangold was like, I want it to be authentic and not really CGI, and I wanted real authentic driving, and and uh, and then just exactly what we were saying, um, what you've been saying for months now, I feel like. In the interviews, are like it's kind of a buddy movie. It's kind of a, a a really like a Ken Miles. It's 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 love and lost and disaster, and it's like it's such a person movie, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, and for good reason because the Ken Miles story is a good story. Yeah, it's dramatic. I know. So I'm excited about seeing this. Oh, and of course they've got to do this thing where they do every time they're like best performance ever by Damon and and and. Uh, and I'm, bail. I'm looking forward to it, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to it breathing life into the 24-hour war, which definitely had a lot of this in it. And um, it's funny, all the pictures they showed at the racetrack, they were clearly at Willow Springs. Everything's at Willow Springs, and Willow Springs is great because you, know, you don't need to change a thing. <laughs> it looks exactly <laughs> the same as it did in 1967, it, yeah. you know? Like they were showing these pictures of them standing on the pit wall and standing up against the pit wall and the blah, blah, blah. And if you look at those pictures and you look at me doing that Trans Am race in the Corvette, it looks ex- it looks the same. same. You watch that race, and, you watch the episode of like Jay Leno's Garage. And there are, like, no, it's the same. there are no skyscrapers or anything in the background <laughs> right. that you have to CGI out or anything. Yeah. It's just every picture. There's not even like sponsor signs in the background you had to, you had to do. It was, it was nothing. It's just dirt. Yeah, <laughs> it's lots of brown. There you go, Max and Pat has put up a picture of them at uh, Lamar. But uh, yeah, it's just dirt. It's just a pit wall. Just dirt. Yeah, it's the same. It looks exact same as when we were there doing our thing, or when Jay Leno goes over there and does his his race over there. I'm excited to see this movie, but I'm also obviously excited because we just cut our trailer for uh, Shelby. Shelby, so um, we got that going on. Um, 
couple little tweaks to do on it. But uh, I saw the I saw the draft of the trailer, and it's going to be it's going to be good. It's I mean it's so much. It's there's so much of a story that you know, but you got to understand Carol Shelby, the race car driver, not the car builder. Well, it'll have everything in there. I mean, this doc is two hours plus, which is a lot of doc because they always come in at about 90, 95 minutes, yeah. 97 minutes or something, you know, 86 minutes. Like, yeah. You think you're going to finish it at two hours or you think you got some, some cutting? No, I think it's. I think it's over two hours, and that's that because we we have been talking about it for a while, and I keep thinking I'm looking at rough cuts or not looking at but talking about rough cuts when I'm talking about like two hours and eight minutes long or whatever, but we're not. We're, we're at the end, yeah. and it's over two hours, and that's what it's going to be because – you have to cover all his driving. You mm-hmm. have to color, cover all his sort of personal world and life and multiple wives and all that. And then all the Le Mans, all the Ford, and then all the all the cars and all the, the – it's like – and then all the physical stuff. Yeah, yeah. All the lung and heart tra- heart transplants and blah, blah, blah. I mean just can't cover it in 90 minutes. If you had to bet Nate a dollar, what do you think is going to come out first, Shelby or Uppity? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Were you uh, able to see the end of this uh, qualified thing? No, they they haven't posted it online yet. I think it's just because it's so new. They want people to watch it on on TV first. I never uh, understand how. Uh, I never. I don't know how anything works. Like, yeah. I don't, like sometimes <laughs> they're like, we put it online first. Yeah, so we drive traffic I'm, to the yeah. station, and, and then sometimes it's like, no, nah, we put it on the station, and then we I, put it online. I, every right. station's different. I I. That's I, why. I've been watching Billions every weekend, and somebody's like, oh, I just finished that season. I was like, what are you talking about? That season finale is in two weeks. We're like, no, no, no. On demand, you can see it all. I was like, what? I was like, what? why is it backwards? Why? Um, I don't know. Why aren't we just living in a world where if it drops on your network, it just drops on your website? Like, it's just out. Yeah. But yeah. anyway. We're DVRing it, so oh, we'll okay. next week. I should have... Uh... I should have told you guys to do that before. I didn't know. I don't, like I said, the ending was just weird, weird and abrupt. But uh, interesting story. And uh, Janet Guthrie had uh, her. She had some indie success, but she actually had more success in stock car, and sort of had more rides in stock car, and was sort of had i guess a a more promising like it like when i was in high school i loved playing football but i was better at baseball and i should have just focused on baseball i couldn't go that far with football and in a weird way she should have done that with stock car like she did pretty well yeah. she was a cool story like the woman running with the good old boys the woman running at Indy and in Indy was cool, but not as big a novelty as the good old boys and her and those right. big, heavy yeah. 3,800 pound stock cars, you know, and her, you know, rubbing fenders with uh, Petty and guys of that ilk and that mm-hmm. era, you know. And even like, and those guys, those guys didn't have a lot of cooth. They were like, we don't want a woman out here. It's dangerous. <laughs> you know, she's going to have a she's got heart palpitations. This, will, this, thing, yeah, you know, yeah. this the firecracker 600. That's a lot of racing. That's a heavy <laughs> car, you know, like, but she could do it. And she was, she was good at it. And it was, seemed like more success. She got to Indy and it was the same as, it was it was the same story as is uppity in the sense that it's it's just indie requires a ton of dough tons of money probably a lot more back then than nascar did stock yeah. car cuz those cars were steel and ran on steel rims and stuff like they were pretty straightforward mm-hmm. cars and um and she just couldn't find the money and it's that kind of thing where it's like, well, well, it's like because it's a woman and it's like, well, nobody who's like kind of a rookie doesn't really have a name. They all struggled. Yeah, they all like kind I, of. 
you could pro- – so here's what I'm saying. It's like she'd say, I couldn't find sponsorship because I'm a woman. I'm sure if you talk to any of the other eight rookies, they'd go, I'm having trouble finding sponsorship because <laughs> yeah. no one's heard of me and yeah, I haven't yeah. won any races. Like, you, right. you know, like I feel like everybody on that second tier is struggling for – for sponsorship yeah that they is still do everybody yeah does. it's not a it's not a <laughs> black it's not a black or female it's nothing unique to being black or female everybody who's not a household name who hasn't won big races indy and other things who's down on that lower tier is struggling who's not patrick dempsey or somebody you've heard of right they're all struggling for that money for that yeah. ride <laughs> yeah so yeah all right. It's funny. A lot of veterans in racing are, are now like in the drag racing world. You know, there's veterans that struggle for the, for the for the sponsorship dollars. It's a tough, it's a tough business, right? And I think if you're a woman or you're black or minority or you're something, you can go, oh, it's because I'm this. Right. But I mean, it's pretty ubiquitous when it comes to racing. <clears throat> All that being said, these people, these companies, would have been smart to give her the sponsorship and the ride because like Danica Patrick, you know, you don't have to win the race, just be in the race and, and every, all eyes are on you. Yeah. You know, you get a lot of folk, you know, you're, you're, tra- you know, she's traveling around Indy and she's in 17th place and the cameras on her. Yeah. You know, you, you spend your investment on making her marketable. Whereas Danica has always been marketable, whether she's been irritated or super pleasant. She's always got something going on. She's got a lot of emotion. Well, <laughs> that makes me want to market our show with <laughs> Zycote. He, the enemy of speed. That's true. Yeah. Zybar. I mean, unless it's a foot race. Yeah. And then you're in Kenya. Uh. Uh, revolutionary high temp coating dissipates heat and increases performance of manifolds, headers, exhausts, turbos, intakes, all the stuff that gets hot and keeps it cool. Everything to do when you pop the hood on one of those Newman turbo cars, almost everything under that thing it has to do with cooling. Yeah. Like, I mean... You pop, you ever pop the hatch on like a Porsche 962? It's a miniature little Porsche <laughs> motor that's in the middle of this car, yeah. like a three liter motor with tons and tons of radiators and coolers Lots and after coolers. And it's, it's all one big cooling <laughs> machine because if you can get the temp down, you can turn the boost up. Yeah. And you can't make power if it's hot under there, and uh, Zybar knows that. So you increase the horsepower and torque, reduce metal surface and under hood temperatures. For listeners who are do-it-yourselfers, you can visit Zycote.com, click Coating Services, and Zycote will coat your parts. I think it was 10 days or 15 days. It was a... Short period of time. You send it in. Yeah, I think it's they, about two weeks. They do everything, and they send it back to you. Super easy. So If uh, you don't have the gear, you don't have the sandblaster and stuff, yeah. just send it in. If you're not a DIYer, send it in. Or even, I'm a DIYer, but I'm just in a hurry, and I want my guys and working if, on other things. if they can do it for you, you can do other stuff. <laughs> Zycoat.com and uh, click coding services there. Uh, let's see. You got an email question for us, Max Pata? Sure do. And if anybody wants to write in you guys, email show at gmail.com. And uh, this one is a actually a follow-up. So uh, last month, a guy named Jake, a listener named Jake, got a new job in San Francisco, but he had a Ford Raptor. And, you guys, right. and he was trying to ask what you guys recommend. You guys thought a Porsche would be nice. Well, he sent a picture, and he writes, Hey, guys, thank you for taking my question on good San Francisco cars <laughs> to compliment my Raptor. I want to follow up with what I went with. Check out the attached picture. I stuck with your Porsche recommendation, but went a little wild. I love it. Keep up the great show, Jake. So he got himself a Porsche Turbo S. Yep. Yeah. Well, center I, locks. Yeah. The center locks. First of all, congratulations on that new job you got there, buddy. Yeah, it's a good job. <laughs> he kept the Raptor and he's got it parked <laughs> in his house out in San Francisco or whatever. Menlo yeah. Park. Yeah, there you go. So good job there. And uh, I love the white. I love it white, too. And, right now, uh, here's a caveat. I'm sure it's got a black interior. My thing is, I love white with a red interior or a navy blue interior. Mm-hmm. Black is fine. But I love white more 
with a red interior yeah. or a navy blue interior. Yeah, the blue is good. It, it's good. I like uh, the turbo Porsche. I mean, can you go wrong? How can you go wrong? It's it's. It's fantastic, and we were talking about it. I was driving the Acura NSX, so the show that earlier this week with uh, Goldberg, we were talking about that car, and the Porsche has the most sort of like Jekyll and Hyde thing going on. Like it's so easy to drive daily. Then when you put it in the Sport Plus mode, mm-hmm. and it just holds the revs up, and it just turns into it just sounds different, reacts different, mm-hmm. and you just get on it a little bit. It's such a monster. There's nothing better than that. That that turbo ass right there. Oof. Uh, congratulations. And also... Thanks for the picture. When I see a Raptor and a turbo Porsche <laughs> parked in the same garage or the same driveway, I'm like, that guy's that guy's got range. The guy's got range. That's a renaissance man. Our buddy David Houston, his wife drives a red Raptor and he had the Porsche GT3. Really? Yeah. She's got a Raptor? <laughs> she has a Raptor. But I'm, they, they I'm, might be getting uh, a G wagon or something now. Oh, I was hoping you're gonna say divorce. I'm into <laughs> this chick. The more I hear about her, the more I'm into yeah, it. No, she's super into the cars and all that stuff. And then she said the only reason why her her Raptor was red because David Houston likes all red cars. So his Porsche, his Ferrari 308, his Viper, his GT3. I had a, <laughs> the Raptor. Everything's red. <laughs> you guys tell me if I'm a dick. <laughs> I. uh I was, I was in the garage. I was in my office last night. I don't know why it made me think of my garage, and nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> I, a, I got a new Jag SUV like a couple of years ago. I drove it home. It's in the garage. I walked in the house. Everyone was just sitting around watching TV because yeah. that's that's how they they vogue in there. They strike a pose <laughs> watching TV. And I walked in. And I went. I got a new Jag in the garage. Who wants to see it? And they all just kind of looked at me and like they they looked like someone had opened the curtains when they were sleeping. You know, they were like, huh? What? And I was like, I got a new Jag in the garage. Who's in? And they're like, we're good. And, they, but, and I was like, wow. It's crazy. It's insane who I live with. But anyway. Seven weeks later, they're like, whose car is that? <laughs> it's like it's been there for two months. So <laughs> tell me if I should be a dick or not. But um, so... Lynette's got the uh, X, the Tesla, the Tesla, and I can't. I think she's gone last night. And Olga comes into my office, and she it's like nine at night, and she's like, "I can't get the garage door shut. I hit the button, the garage door shuts. It goes down. It's it starts going down like two feet, then it stops, and the light blinks, and it goes back up." And I'm like, uh, no one's in the garage and no one's, Lynette's not home. Where, yes, I hit the button. It, she'll do the thing where I go, I understand what's going yeah, on. Something's you in told, the way. You told me this. It goes down. Goes down. And I go, um, all right, go down and check the, the marker lights, the, the laser beam lights on the right and the left. That there's something blocking it. It's out of alignment or something because that's, that's usually what it is. Goes down, comes up. And uh, she's like, okay, I'll check. And then she comes back into the office like five minutes later. Now, look, uh, I'm happy to say I got a big house and my office is far away from going down to the garage. Yeah. So I'm like sitting there. I've, I've done 18 podcasts that day. She comes in. She's like, I, it, it, there's nothing blocking it. It's, you still hit it. It's, still, it's not working. And I'm like, Okay. Get up, go walk down, go down, go to the magic eye that's like closest. You know, they're both six inches off the ground. Yeah. And they're on a piece of like bent sheet metal or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the one that's close to me is like facing Mecca. Like Sonny was <laughs> running in the garage and kicked it or yeah, somebody or, caught something yeah. on it. And it's just it's just bent and clearly facing way out. It's not <laughs> making contact with the one across it. Yeah. And I'm like Okay. I, I, look, I just tell you, I, all I do is go, here's what's going wrong. And then everyone runs back. I think they go into the hall and they just stand there and they go, one Mississippi. Two Mississippi. <laughs> How long would it take you to get to three the Mississippi? And then they come back in and they go, it's not working. It doesn't work. And I go, then I have this weird concern. Like, I'm going to have to pull the safety hatch string on it, undo it manually yeah. and shut it and get the garage guy out because I'm out of ideas. If those two yeah. laser lines aren't lining up. 
So I like go down, I look down, and I see the ones just facing out, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't bend down. I use my foot, and I just push it and bend it back, so it's generally facing yeah. the other one. And then I go over to the garage door, and I hit the button, and it's like, it goes all the way down. And then I'm like, all right. <laughs> now, I'm in the basement, and I'm going to hit the rowing machine, but I must burn some more calories and go back up because Olga's in the kitchen. And I got to go, hey, man, <laughs> like, what are we talking about here? And then I get into the conversation I have with everyone, which makes me a dick, which is they go, I go, uh, Olga, I went down there and the, the two beams, one of them was like bent and like facing the middle of the garage, you know, like, come on. Like, didn't you see that? And she's like, you said to look for something blocking it. And I'm like, okay. I meant they're not. I meant they're not facing. They're not seeing each other. Yeah. Like sometimes someone sets a bag down, but sometimes they get bent out or whatever. And she's like, it still means they're not seeing each other. You, you put you, fill in the way, or you bend right. one out of the way. They're not seeing each you, other. You said to see if someone's blo- it's blocking it. Yeah. So if somebody like put a cardigan sweater over it, or like hung <laughs> it over or something, and I said, okay, I okay. What I should have said is, are they? Bent, like, do they see each other? And she's like, I don't know how it works. And I go, uh, okay, okay, you don't, by, by the way, we're the same age. Well, I, I understand. <laughs> you, I, I didn't have a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a basic, it's a kind of a basic thing. I, no, I don't, yeah. I didn't know. I go, okay, okay. The garage door opener is no longer a rich man's sport. Yeah, I it's go, everywhere. <laughs> okay, well, n- okay. But next time, just next time, if you see one that's bent and it looks like it's facing the wrong direction, you said to see if something was blocking it. Okay, understood. Just they look at each other, make sure it's not bent. Do that next time and every time. Yes? Okay. Sorry. Okay. (laughs) Good. All right. That's uh, that's how my life works. You know what my batting average of when I tell people, look, did you check the blah, 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 and they go, hey, I looked at the pop 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 and I go, okay, now I'm getting up. <laughs> All right, here I come. Go back. Go back and just look again. Do do it again. Give it another pass. Give it another pass. All right. Did you go back to the office or did you go down and row? I rowed. Thirty minutes. Yeah. Going strong. <laughs> Sweating. I told you the rowing machine's badass. But the thing <laughs> the thing about me is I was perturbed that I had to make the move from the office, but I had plenty of energy to go back upstairs from the rowing machine to, to, to go to, settle Olga's hash about <laughs> about these lines. You know, you know why? Because I get beat on a lot of technicalities. I say I hear that a lot around here. I talk to people like they know things. You know what I mean? So I say things like, "Well, check the eyes. Make sure nothing's blocking the eyes." But I don't mean blocking necessarily i mean make sure they're lined up yeah you come back up and go there's nothing blocking the eyes so it's not that but it's like yep yeah, one of them's bent and clearly going the wrong direction <laughs> right you Same did thing. beat me on a technicality <laughs> because i didn't i don't say make sure there's nothing blocking the eyes they have to see each other or that one is perhaps bent and not seeing, and that's the alternative. I don't say that. I just go make sure nothing's blocking the eyes, and they're communicating. Right, well, it's on you. It is on me. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you guys about Geico. Everybody's got a to-do list. You drop off your dry cleaning, you pick up some milk, and now you can add save hundreds of dollars of, on car insurance, and you don't have to drop off or pick up anything. Just go to Geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you could be saving 15 percent or more on car insurance. So if you want some extra money in your pocket. This is the most rewarding to do you can do today. Be sure to check out Geico.com. All right. Denver Comedy Works coming up June 14th and 15th. Adam Carolla is unprepared. Do two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's good. I get a little weekend work in. Also, uh, Portland coming up. Monterey. What day is August 17th. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Saturday because I remember Mike August calling me and going, "Hey, what's the schedule look like?" I said, "Don't do it on Quail Day." Yeah, don't do it because there's quail a little day. bit of a there's a little bit of hangover on Quail Day. It is Saturday. <laughs> all yeah. right, so that'll be Saturday night. <laughs> okay, over there, and uh, go to amcrolla.com for all the stuff. Go to Chassis for all the movies and uh, 
not Taco Bell material and all that. You can get it at iTunes and everything else as well. Shift and Steer available on iTunes oh, and Podcast One. And until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com.